Hello, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, North America, wherever you are. I welcome you to the Grey Air Podcast, and my name is Grey Jabesi, of course. Um, this is episode number nine with Esther Wong from Hong Kong, but she has been all over the place as well. She's a traveler. We met via couch surfing. Um, if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, I recommend you do because it has all been fun. So basically what I do is I bring you the rest of the world in your headphones or on your smartphone, in your computer, whatever you use to listen to the podcast. Uh, then you don't have to go around and meet all these awesome people. I just go around and meet them, record, and you can just listen to the conversation and be part of it. You can comment or you can like if you like it and share with friends. And again, you can find the Grey F podcast on emojimotion.com or on my personal website, which is greyjabesi.com. You'll find a link that takes you to the podcast there. My, web, uh, my website is greyjabesi.com, and there you find it. So in this one, we have Esther from Hong Kong, and she's a music therapist, musical therapist. She's from, um, she's coming from Europe at the moment because that's where she kind of grew up as well and did her studies in music uh, because she left Hong Kong when she was 15, which is kind of brave if you think about it. But I won't bother you with talking too much about it. Just listen to the conversation with Esther Wong. It was really awesome. And my friend Stephen Rupia was there as well. So I kept it fun. Um, enjoy the episode with Esther Wong. So we have um, Esther. How do you pronounce your surname first? Wong. Okay, we have Esther Wong. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, from from Hong Kong, definitely. Yeah, that's right. All right. Where where in Hong Kong are you from? Is Hong Kong just Hong Kong the whole of it, or is it as well, a, a lot of different places? It's quite small. That that city. It's kind of like a city. But um, I live in an area called Mong Kok. So okay. it's um, we have like you know how you have different islands. I live in a Kowloon side, but there's a suburb called Mong Kok. So that's where I live. Yeah. Okay. So how did you end up here? That's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually I, I plan to do like um, like a touring, African touring for like three months. So I actually started in Kampala in Uganda. Ah. So I went with like this overlanding truck for for sixty five days on that truck. So going going all the way from Uganda, passing through all the countries, all the way to South Africa. So this is the last stop. Wow. Yeah, okay. How many countries have you traveled through or I all the way? I think was it seven or eight countries? Like if I need to count it, like did, did you go through Rwanda and Burundi? Yes. Yeah, so Uganda, Rwanda, um, Tanzania, Malawi. Oh, what's next? So Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana. Um, Namibia and South Africa, nine. Oh, actually. nice! Yeah. You didn't go through uh, Mozambique because no, you, no. you you went through Malawi to yeah, Zambia, right. I assume, and yeah, then yeah. yeah, yeah, and then Zimbabwe, I guess, yeah. and then Botswana. You went in through Botswana? Yeah, yeah. Then, oh, no, oh yeah, now that makes yeah. sense. Cool. Steve is from Tanzania. Oh, right. I'm from Tanzania, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I, I went to primary school in Uganda, Kampala, Seriously, for like right. six years. So wow, I, have, I know the place quite mm. well. It's good. Yeah, and uh, she's a mu- I, okay. You're a, a music mu- therapist. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What does a music therapist do? So we work with people with like you know um, disabilities. So people, let's say for example, adults with um, mental health problems like depressions or um, you know bipolar or children with like you know, special needs like they can't talk, they can't really some sort of physical disabilities. Right. Yeah. That's pretty much what a music therapy does. So we work with them with music and trying to use music to help them to improve whatever they need to improve. Let's say, for example, improve a little bit of speech, maybe, mm-hmm. or just to help them to improve their life in general. Yeah. Is it, is it more like uh, in, in meditation, there's a thing called the word that you say again and again mantra you, mantra is more like mantra <laughs> <laughs> not really I mean music therapy we have a lot of like usually in music therapy setting we have a lot of instruments that we play together mm-hmm. so it's always through interaction that we help them to improve oh, okay yeah. 
Mm. And uh, like, uh, what instruments do you use especially? For me, I, um, I specialize in just piano and guitar, but um, we have a lot of percussions, instruments, drums, and everything. So we use whatever the people prefer to use. All right. But they don't need to be, you know, musical. They don't need to learn how to play it. They right. just come in and play. Yeah. So you teach them how to play the instruments? We don't really teach them. They just come and interact with the instruments, whatever ways they want. Oh, yeah. interesting. And uh, what, what, what is yeah, uh, the results? Uh, is it, uh, are you seeing the results from the therapy? Are they, is it really working out? Is it improving their lives and all that? Well, it's, um, it's uh, scientifically based because we have a lot of research. It's kind of like, let's say it's a research-based um, practice. So that's a lot of, so many, so many years of research have been done for like different areas okay. for music therapy. Let's say for you know how music can improve someone's speech, and there's the research for that, and people with dementia, mm -hmm. that's also for that. So yeah, that's cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Let Let's get backward a little bit. Yeah. You how how come you're Esther Wang? How come I'm Esther Wang? Yeah, Esther. How come you're Esther? You're from Hong Kong. You mean my name? Your name, yeah. Uh, well, there's another long story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> so my original Chinese name is Yang Wei. Dorcas Wong. So Dorcas is actually the English name. Dorcas. Yang Wai is my Chinese name. Yeah, Yang Wai. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get the English name? So the English name, my parents picked it. So it's kind of ah. like a tradition. Everybody has an English name. Yeah. So oh, along with your Chinese name. Okay. So for me, I have like two English names. So that's why one of them is Esther. Oh, okay. Oh, um, how, how, how is it like to, to grow up in, in Hong Kong? How did you grow up there? Well, that's How is Hong Kong like? Just want to try to get the vibe, you know? Well, Hong Kong is like a small city. You know, you have the mountains and the backdrop. It's very similar to Cape Town, I would say. Mm -hmm. but, um, and one thing for sure, it's the education system is quite straight. All right. So, you know, you kind of need to, they only have like a few subjects for you to kind of choose. And I think everybody study for like eight or nine subjects. That's secondary school. And it's quite, it's quite tough, I suppose, growing up in Hong Kong, like, you know, Every day you go back home and just do your homework and for like, you know, that's what you do. <laughs> and it's very scheduled. Yeah. 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 Right. At least for my family. So it's true the story we hear about yeah. strict parenting yes. and yeah. education. No yeah. dating until yeah. a certain age or something. <laughs> until you get out of university. <laughs> until you get out of university? What? Yeah. No. <laughs> so how, how, how was your childhood like and <laughs> growing up in that kind of environment? Wow. <laughs> how was my childhood like? Yeah. Well, it's because uh, I have a lot of memories, just, you know, very scheduled timetable. Like every day you have, you need to do this, 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 do your homework first before you can do anything else. And, um, you know, weekend you can always go out and, you know, my parents took me, you know, go to the park and mm. bike and stuff. We do a lot of sports, at least for our family. But um, my parents forced me to learn piano, so that's mm. part of it. Forced you to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all the Asian parents do. Like, uh, oh yeah, it's I heard. Very typical uh, Asian parents. I heard about that. Yeah. Everybody plays piano, and that's oh. you know, <laughs> and you need to practice every day for like one hour. Mm. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. For uh, for what age did you start? I think I started when I was six. Yeah, and I hated it so badly, and so I kind of because back. you're forced. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So I begged my mom, "Can I please quit?" I was like, I was mm. in tears in class, basically. I was like, "Oh, oh. can I please get out of this class, please?" <laughs> <laughs> so I quit after I think. Two or three years, yeah. Okay. And then you went back to it. Yeah. So if you're kind of a, a rebel <laughs> person, <laughs> how would you grow up in Hong Kong? <laughs> oh, that's how I left. That's why I left oh, okay. when I was a teenager. Yeah. Oh, oh, you left when you were... So when did you leave? When I was 15. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, was that after high school? or? Was yeah, that was kind of in, in the middle of high school. So mm. 15, you're kind of like um, year 11. Tell us a story, like what, what happened exactly, what motivated you, how did you get... <laughs> yeah, at 15, how did you get out of <laughs> exactly. Hong Kong? Oh, that's the, the guts, you know? Yeah, because I hated the education system so badly because they don't do music at all. Yeah. Because I'd want to do something more creative and they yeah. just, uh, they only do science, you can only do science, um, I think accounting and history, that's three branches yeah. that you can go to and I hated all of, all of the above. Yeah. So I was like begging my parents, can I please go somewhere, I don't care, just chuck me somewhere, I can go to Thailand, I could go to Southeast Asia, anywhere. And they were thinking, so I kind of begged them to please let me go. And they happened to know someone like a family in New Zealand. So they said, oh, why don't you try on New Zealand and just finish your high school there. So yeah, I was there in but New Zealand. At the same time, how do you think that your education system is what made you 
realize what what was going on at 15 and maybe think that you make a good idea as like going out of there at 15 i don't think most 15 year olds would think like that can they yeah i suppose yeah well i suppose it's just for me it was very suffocating okay like it's just you know being in a building you need to go to schools that you need to go to all the classes that you hate Mm. (laughs) like apart from english i remember english and probably music that was my favorite class that's it Mm. we have like eight or nine subjects so you can you can imagine the pain of you know going to classes that you just don't even bother yeah yeah are you smart (laughs) <laughs> Depends on how you define You're smart. Asian, right? <laughs> We're Asian, or Asian. Or Asian. <laughs> but I understand it's because yeah. of hard work. Yeah, of it yeah, doesn't yeah, come right. cheap. It's you know? hard working. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, we're yeah. trained to be like that. It's very, yeah. you know, every, very structured, yeah. very disciplined. I think that's the word. Yeah. And the, that's how you work as well. Like yeah. You. I mean, these days I'm quite, you know, kind of be like that, but I mm. try to be away from that a little bit. Yeah. And uh, your life in New Zealand, like how was it? I'm sure you, you, you like living the strict life in Hong Kong and going to the, I don't know, to the, the free, free world, world <laughs> in <laughs> New Zealand. Like how did you handle that? Well, I think I handled it quite well. I really enjoyed my, all my time. I was there for seven years in New Zealand. So, so from 15 to 22, that is? Yeah, kind of 21, 22. All right. Which, after, you know, all the way to university and I stay one, one more year after university. Yeah. So that was great. But sorry, how did you how did it work that you went to New Zealand from Hong Kong directly to New Zealand? Did mm-hmm. your parents have some kind they of had family? Uh, yeah, yeah, they had like connections, like friends. Yeah, so oh, okay. I was um, living in like a homestay family for right. maybe two years. Right. So they kind of take care of everything because you can't really fifteen years old. You, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of take care of everything, and um, yeah, yeah. That's how I started. Okay. And yeah. and what university did you go? Um, University of Auckland. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you chose music? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what inspired you to do music there? Well, I suppose I found out at the end of my high school years, so the last two years, I did music as well. So we've only got five subjects in New Zealand high school. And I really like it there. And um, I was thinking whether I want to be a performer or whether I want to be a composer. So at the end, I didn't manage to get into the um, performing piano mm-hmm my performance um, major so I did composition instead so yeah do you so you like music from, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what music do you listen to oh um, now you mm-hmm. mean these days doesn't matter like what's your favorite music all time music instrumental music oh, yeah. okay yeah. do you like um, uh, like soundtracks movie soundtracks yeah that's scores? part of it yeah I like these days I kind of like some like a genre it's like world fusion genre like so if you just mix everything together and you can't really tell where music are from okay. so that's the type of genre that I write as well oh so you write music yes, as well yes yes I'm a composer as well you know John Zima Hmm? John, yes, is it yeah. uh, Zim? Hans Zimmer Hans Zimmer, Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Yeah. sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really cool really, yeah, yeah, very yeah, cool definitely. composer and Oh yeah, he's really and, and cool. he's is the Batman tri- trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and yeah. Superman also. Yeah, yeah. New Superman. A lot of movies are yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's how Caribbean. how about uh, Steve Jablonski? Do you know him? Uh, he composed uh, the Transformers soundtrack. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, he's incredible. I like Amazing. his orchestra and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So at at seventeen, uh, what uh, at after university, then what happened? Were you working in between, or you just were just studying all the time from fifteen to twenty two? I kind of work as a freelancer, like as I was working, my first part-time job when I was in university was a mm. piano teacher, so that's how I got my, first got paid, I suppose. Oh, All right, that. as a piano teacher, that is yeah, your first teacher. job. So New I studied Zealand and or Hong Kong? In, that was in New Zealand, yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. I study and I work, and after university I work for one year, one more year, because I really wanted to stay behind, Right. and I work as a piano teacher as well, so during that time, yeah. Yeah, so I've been piano teaching quite a lot yeah, yeah. yeah was it kids or yeah we have like um it's, it varies like from three years old all the way to like 60 yeah so yeah and you still motivated about music as you were five years ago or yeah, yeah, anything definitely. Changed? yeah nothing changed but okay it's just more more passionate i suppose yeah. Oh, okay yeah. so you didn't did you you went to cambridge as well yeah i was in cambridge for the last two years oh, okay okay, yeah. okay so that's how i train as a music therapist yeah. Oh right. Uh-huh. So you studied music first and then yeah, yeah. music therapy later. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um what made you to start to study music therapy? Well, um originally my idea after, you know, training as a composer was to become a, you know, 
a composer who writes film, film music, so soundtracks and stuff, because yeah. I really want to go into that area. But then I kind of met someone who kind of introduced me to that um, field and I kind of find out oh, that might not be something that I want to do because you mm. need to kind of work for like project based type of work and you, you just keep writing for like 24 hours a day for like <laughs> two months. <laughs> oh yeah, you want to you yeah. get your movie out. Eh? It's exactly. like working in visual effects almost. Yeah, and I felt like that's, that's not really what I wanted to do. That's like, you're working for, mm. what are you working for? Like, it's all for money. And yeah. I was thinking that might not be what I wanted to do. So, Because I, I, I prefer writing music as a hobby, I suppose. Okay. And something You write something that you enjoy, rather so than true. writing something that someone else wants you to write. It's like, write it now. Right yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. So, and you'll be under so much stress. Yeah. If you're working as a composer like that, so I'm thinking, oh man, that might not be my field that I kind of explore a little bit more, mm. and um, find out one professor, one music therapist in Hong Kong, and I did like a short training with him, mm. and that's how that's my first time being introduced to music therapy. So that was great. I mean, seeing videos of him, like video of music therapy sessions, how mm. he work with like children with autism. Yeah. So children who can who don't they don't normally interact or talk to each other, talk to anyone. And you see them really coming alive in the music therapy session. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is something that I wanted to do. Mm. So, yeah. And I went and do the trainings and become a music therapist. Yeah. Uh, so I will check those videos out. Yeah, so, yeah. I feel like I need to yeah. Yeah. see yeah, the yeah, video. But then how, how, how long does the, the effects last on a, on a human being after effects. the session? Yeah. yeah. It's not really, it's not like a magic pill that you just have it yeah. and you would be healed yeah. for like a certain amount of time it's like it's a long term right? it's a long term process you know for children mm-hmm. like that children with autism they it's you know you're actually making an impact in their life they yeah. you know start interacting more with people okay. over time and yeah so it's a progressive yeah it's a progressive attitude i guess exactly um but then does it is it something that changes the person completely or it's only when they're doing the therapy well um it's debatable i suppose but there's a lot of research you can see that um, once they actually acquire the skills, they can actually use it outside as well. Okay. But music therapy is a long-term process. Like mm. You're talking about a few months all the way to a few years. Yeah. So it's not like one-off sessions and a yeah. person can go out of the room and talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you have had a few sessions, I guess, during studying. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, had, I was um, doing internship for like almost two years. All right. So working with different people. So, yeah. Uh, so what is your highlight moment du- during your your therapies my trainings yeah well I suppose like just to I, I work with people with depression for the, the last year yeah. and you know the same thing I see people coming alive like when you see them in the ward like because mm. they're so they're very um, mentally ill they're mm. so depressed they're in the hospital yeah so they don't want to do anything at all they just sat there and they won't talk to anybody mm. so they're just you know in their own zone but once you get them into the music therapy room they like they're fully alive they're like mm. you know interacting with you and they're talking about the troubles and stuff and you know you can see them you can see them brightening up and that's it's very inspiring yeah i've heard i've heard a lot of stories about depression to yeah. be honest with you i don't really i don't think i understand what depression is yeah scientifically it's a chemical reaction i guess something like yeah, that you could say it that yeah. yeah yeah um but on the other side it's like you have been very close to to, to the depression person or depressed people mm. How, what what exactly is going on in the head? Like, what is their mind frame? What what makes them different from the rest of us? Because I guess anybody yeah. has moments where, you know, you're happy or yeah. sometimes you're not. Yeah, but if yeah. you say depression, I guess it's like a long term yeah. career of yeah. unhappiness, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's more like the durations. Like, so you um, um, you have like different sort of. In a medical term, like you need to hit all the criteria to become mm. a to be classified as a depression. So it's the durations, and it's it's mostly the durations. Oh, okay. say. So more than you know one month or two months, that kind of thing, and that you're constantly very low, and you don't have, you know, you're not motivated to do anything, and it affects your work. Mm. You don't want to go out or anything like that. So it it kind of you can see that person very different from the normal self, okay. and that's how you kind of one of the ways of classifying as a person yeah. having depression yeah. and and they don't do what do they do about it themselves themselves you yeah. mean the depressed the victim but they don't they don't do they don't want to do anything 
Ah. Yeah, so that's one of the side effects you can see there. No, they're not motivated. That's mm. one of the symptoms. Not motivated to do anything. They don't want to go to work, don't want to go out, stay in their room all the time, and constantly very low, very upset, and yeah. Okay. Low yeah. energy level. Yeah. And what are the major causes that you, you find that are pretty common? The cause? Yeah. It's, it's multifaceted, I suppose. There's so many different factors. You mm. can't really count it on one thing. Yeah. So one of the things, you know, chemical imbalance. Okay. Yeah. It could be, or it could be, you know, they they're experiencing some some maybe some relationship issues. Right. That might be that's another thing. Mostly, I think, our know, relationships. Um, Most yeah. mostly it's relationships. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, families, friends, yeah. or you know, how they see themselves. Yeah. The self esteem that's part of it. Yeah, that's pretty much. Gee, that's some hectic stuff. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So you about to change that to work with those people. <laughs> 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 so you have been uh, away from Hong Kong for all these years. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you find uh, England? England, it's very, very different. Because I mean, if you want to compare to New Zealand, it's just two different extremes. Mm. New Zealand here, England is on the other extreme oh, in okay. terms of the weather, yeah. the people, mm-hmm. and the culture, and the landscape as well yeah so, yeah all right so for someone who have seen the world you are you you you're from hong kong mm-hmm. from a hong kong culture now that you have traveled how different do you see the world like how do you see hong kong right now well, the differences suppose, yeah the difference compared to all the other countries and cities mm-hmm. like in the beginning, when I first left, when I was fifteen, mm. I hated it so badly. Because yeah. of, maybe possibly because of the people. Yeah. And uh, such confined space. But now that I've I left and see all the other ones, you kind of start comparing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm beginning to think it's it's actually not bad. It's a pretty nice place to live. You have all the mountains, which you know UK doesn't have. Like it's so flat, you don't have anywhere to hike. Yeah. It's just too flat. And it's just so accessible, like you can just go on a MTR, the, the metro system in Hong Kong, and just go mm. anywhere. Yeah. Within half an hour, you can go anywhere. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask an odd question. Yeah. I asked my Korean friend, he gave me a very odd number. <laughs> um, when did you have your first boyfriend? Oof, that's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Being Hong Kongese and you know you have, you have the whole Hong Kong background and mindset. Yeah. It's, it's pretty hard, I guess. The first one, yeah. maybe eighteen, nineteen, I'll say. Yeah. Okay, pretty early for a Hong Kong person, I guess. Still That's too early. late, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> from a from a Hong, Hong oh, Kong yeah. person, I would expect. Start dating my my classmates start dating when they were like what. 13. In Hong Kong? Yeah. Okay. Did the parents know about it? Or I don't know about them. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents know about your boyfriend? No. <laughs> At 18, to them, you were like, still a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now, have you been to Hong Kong? How many do you usually visit? Yeah, like almost every year. Because actually, I was back in Hong Kong for like four years. Mm-hmm. In between New Zealand and UK, I was mm-hmm. there for four years. Okay. Yeah, but for the past two years, I've been there. Uh, I've been back twice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how do how do the people see you now that you obviously have changed, lived different places? Well, no, I think that people are kind of getting used to it, like yeah. used to me shuffling all the time. So they're oh. kind of like, oh, okay, what's your story? Yeah. Is it common in Hong Kong for people to travel the world and all that? Not really. I've got some. A lot of people would just prefer to travel in Southeast Asia, like you know, yeah. go to easy places for food, like yeah. Taiwan and Thailand, Japan. That's the common mm. places. But yeah, I haven't met someone who's like me. Like I haven't yeah. got any friends who would like to join my journey. Oh, right. So that's a shame. Yeah. yeah. And your uh, your Cantonese is still very good. Yeah, I still. suppose it's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Some of those some words I need to think about what to say. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what What do you like the most about the the whole Chinese culture? Well, what do you think? It's very different from the rest of the world, but it's really good. That maybe most Western cultures get wrong. Maybe I don't know. Oh, that's a tough question. What would that be? I think it might be probably the food culture, I suppose, because you know you're. You know, Christmas and New Year, Chinese New Year, you always go, to, especially Chinese New Year, mm. I suppose, that like you always go to 
there's always this tradition where you, where you always go to like your relatives and you visit them mm-hmm. and you visit everyone and you see them very often like I mean during families event everybody come up for like you know for dinner and stuff mm-hmm. and you know the round table like the Chinese round yeah, table yeah, how yeah. you eat mm. and that's quite nice like yeah you know, gathering everyone together you know right yeah. <coughs> and you know how to make Chinese food yeah, yeah of course definitely. Yeah. Yeah. and uh, what's the uh, the most odd um, uh, meat you've ever eaten I mean meat. I don't know if that even counts <laughs> or animal oh, I don't think I've had any really strange whale I had a whale burger a whale burger where in Hong Kong no wow. no 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 no, in Hong Kong that was in Norway you know that's, that's the story Norway they're killing the whales now <laughs> but what do you expect we're still Scandinavian <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh wow. I see. You wanna try somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we also have shark fins. Shark fins. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we have in China uh, in Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, uh, that's not a surprise. Yes. <laughs> for, for for Chinese yes. culture. Yeah. Have, you, have you have you tried uh, cat dog? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, but is it true that people eat eat dogs? They do. Yeah, in China, not yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. In Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. And it's not odd to, to do that there. No, no. It's very common. All right, you know this dog eating story. Yeah. To, me, to me, it's totally okay to be honest yeah. with you. I think it's a whole culture thing. Right. It's like for the Western culture, if you if they raise the dog as a okay, let's let's assume a, a, a different a sheep a, a, as, a, as a pet as a pet, and yeah. somebody else somewhere, it's right. it's the the ship. Then what do you say to that? You know, yeah, yeah. it's like in India, the the you know the. A cow is something sacred to them. Yeah. Whereas we just eat them, you know. To us, it's beef. It's just yeah. like meat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just meat. But then most people, they kind of like, ah, oh, about the dog eating story. It's like, mm. come on, man. Mm. It's kind of, it's kind of stressful. <laughs> when you think about it. I don't like when people are complaining about eat dog eating or cat eating. Right, it's like, yeah. if you think it's a pet, just keep yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then, do do people lose their pets? <laughs> yeah, you never know. If they, oh. I heard people when people travel to China lose yeah. lose their pets. You rather leave your dog home, man. You yeah, don't take exactly. them to China. You don't want to take them there. No, okay. Maybe the Chihuahua. But <laughs> what is <laughs> missing? <laughs> They're gonna bright. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the, what's the most common like the uh, like the most delicious or the more the most ex- accepted food like meat in in China. Here, chicken is like the thing yeah. in South Africa. Right. It's not my favorite, but okay. most people like it. Oh, chicken, beef, and pork. That's the three main meat. Okay. So it's very common. And if you want to go a little more expensive, like if you want to have something fancy and expensive? Uh, seafood, maybe, I would say. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty much the same yeah, as here. Yeah. You get your shrimps yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's pretty cool. Mm. So now let's get back to your travel stories. Sure. Um, where else have you gone? Have you traveled like this before or this is your first time? Uh, I've done Europe and right. um, Asia, um, Iceland. Mm-hmm. So unless you want me to say out all the countries, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. But you did Europe? Yeah. More than 10 countries? Yeah, more than that, I should be. Because oh. I've done the entire Central Europe. So I've done everything from Scandinavia, Central um, Europe, Eastern Europe a little bit. I just haven't done the bit from Poland all the way down to Greece. Mm. Yeah, that's the part that I still need to do. How do you find the money to do that? Well, I work as a piano teacher. That's how I got my funding from. So, oh, okay. Yeah. You guys in Europe, that you have it easy. Eh? Like <laughs> if if you're studying, you can just do something, and then you get paid, and then you just travel the world. Yeah, and it's you know, thanks to cultural uh, stuff. It's, it's, it's yeah. the strength of the money, the currency. That's, yeah, yeah, that's really helping them out. Yeah, like uh, I was wondering, what's the age uh, like people in Hong, like young people in Hong Kong leave home and you know to hmm. come in independent? Like, what's the age? Well, I think usually people, it's. It's tough, I mean, because of the um, the cost of living, it's, it's really expensive in Hong Kong. So most people, like even people from my age, most of them, they just can't afford to live, you know, leave home and be independent somewhere else. Right. So okay. even up to like 20, 29, 30, people still living with their parents. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah. That's really? very common, actually. It's very common, eh? Very common. Until you get married? Something yeah, until you get married, yes. Because wow. it's just too expensive, like ridiculous pricing. Yeah. So I would say maybe the general 28, I would say, that you're going to start leaving, unless you study abroad. Mm. Yeah. 
Um, and how is uh, how is it with women in how are women perceived in the Asian culture or in Hong Kong? Well, it's quite equal, I would say. There's nothing, no, you know, sexist, okay. sexism or something mm. like that. So, very equal, like even for professional. Okay. So, it's being treated quite well. Equally, okay. Yeah. And in marriage, is it balanced as well? Yeah, it's definitely a balance. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you have, in Africa, we have a thing called Lobola where you have to pay money for the wo- woman if you yeah. want to marry. Do you still do you have that as well there? Pay the woman. Uh, no, no, like dowry. Paying dowry. Okay. Like a bride price. Um, I don't think so. I haven't. I'm not married, so I'm <laughs> not the person to answer that question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Like, uh, does the husband have to give like a gift to the to parents, the family, the family of, of no, their wife? No, not that I've heard of. No. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it depends That's family true. to family situation. Because, but, but all my friends who got married, they're just so flexible. It's okay. Like, this, you can just whatever you want and that kind of oh. thing, so. <laughs> so you might have to go agents you don't know, get a quote you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> get a quote <laughs> you won't get a quote of 18 cows and uh, yeah. a million rand and they're smart right so that's really oh yeah they're, they're smart as well <laughs> that's a good bargain right <laughs> so they can work and you just try you just try yeah I'll, I'll be traveling and she'll be working for yeah. <laughs> does that work would that work in oh you? I think so yeah <laughs> <laughs> or she would run, bro. If you do that, she would. Sure. Yeah. And how is it, how do how are you guys with the, with foreign uh, couches like foreigners in your country? Well, it's also being treated quite equal because we are just so international in mm. Hong Kong. It's like a lot of expat coming in and just working alongside. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just not bad. All right. And to get a visa, is it how easy is it? Depending on which country, for, but for you know African people, it's just it's easy because you know, Hong Kong has a lot of has good relationship with you know, Africa. Oh yeah, yeah. I sure. don't need a visa to get in to any African countries that I've been traveling. Yeah. So, oh, oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Actually, go to China from Africa is quite easy. Yeah. yeah. Go to Hong Kong. Hong China, Kong is China, easy. Hong Kong, yeah. China, you might need an extra visa, but not mm. Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah. By the way, I see a lot of Chinese uh, yeah. people from Hong Kong in Tanzania. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Maybe yeah. that's a deal the car- the countries yeah, yeah. are making. Yeah, they have exactly, deals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe Hong Kong might be actually a right, a right thing to do. Yeah. Even though it's expensive. But yeah, it's expensive. Depending on where you live and if you can tolerate a small apartment, if you don't mind it, then mm-hmm. that should be fine. Yeah. yeah. And how is your experience with car surfing? Well, it's been really positive so far because mm-hmm. I started in Germany mm-hmm. and like I think two or three years ago. And I've been doing that ever since. Yeah. And you have a, you have any outstanding experiences, good or bad? Oh, there's too many good experience. Let's see. I think one of the best one was in Petra in Jordan. Mm-hmm. There was this guy. I think I felt like he, he just owned like a little you know hotel according mm. to the review. Mm. Like okay, this guy owned a little hotel, but he you know you never know until you kind of meet that person. Mm. So I turned up to this biggest hotel in Petra. And apparently, so this guy walked out, apparently he's the boss of that hotel. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, so now this is what's happening. And I was being treated like a VIP for the for three days that I was there. Well, like couch a surfing. VIP. I was, this is extreme couch surfing, I called it. I mm. got my own room, like wow. you know, a proper hotel room that you can imagine. And, um, you know, he was treating me to dinners and stuff like that. And, so mm-hmm. I just, and all the staff in the hotel was treating me as a VIP. Oh, do you need something to drink? Do you need anything? Mm. Or can we help you? And oh. stuff like that. Is this like a marketing <laughs> oh strategy or something? Yeah, I think it's PR. Yeah, it's PR I think, stand. I think yeah. that's okay. one of them. Yes. So but you can go yes. and, you know, say, hey, hey, I had such a great experience yeah. in, you know, this and place. This hotel, yeah. This hotel. That's, that's one of them, but I think that person is also very keen to meet travelers. So he's uh, so yeah. friendly. You know, he, he actually spent time with me. Like all the time, like most of the time, when, okay, okay. when he's not. So working. he was really interested. He you know. is interested in like meeting people and knowing the stories and cultural exchange and stuff mm. like that. So it's not just about you know getting more business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And um, any w- w- bad experience? Bad experience, I'll say, it was probably in Morocco. Mm-hmm. Not too bad, but it's just that it's. I think it's it's a very different culture there. Like okay. you don't really know what people are thinking about, but um, I feel like people there are. They just want to get more tourists into the town. It's a very small town. Mm-hmm. They want to get more tourists. That's why they do couch surfing. So if you get more tourists, you got more, you know, more money coming yeah. into that town, yeah. which is reasonable, I suppose. Yeah. But it's just really hard. My host was really hard to read. I, I can't really read what he's thinking, mm. and you don't know what he's 
he doesn't really speak um, English that much, oh, so right, you okay. have no idea what's going on. Uh, like, are we supposed to get our own food, or are we cooking, or are we not? You, you yeah. don't know what to do. Yeah. Like, it was really awkward situations, but um, it wasn't too comfortable, I suppose, mm. as in like, because we don't know what to do. Yeah, like, yeah. what is he thinking? He doesn't really want to communicate, but uh, uh, yeah. That's a very, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. 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 So, where is, are you happy where you are right now, as far as your career and stuff? Well, I suppose, yeah, you haven't really, I'm in between, you know, studying, yeah. you know, working. Mm-hmm. So I'm still in between thinking what's next. So yeah. I'm quite quite happy at the stage of, you know, just spending time traveling, and just seeing more of the world before I settle down somewhere. Okay. But and you said you might go back to Hong Kong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And settle down there? You never know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and you worked in, in she worked in visual effects a little bit. Me and oh, Steve really? work work in CG. What did you do? Not visual effects, sound okay, effects. In film, sound right? effects. Sound right. sound oh, sound, sound effects. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. In film, sound effects. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I work with like cool. a game game company. Game, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. But then if you say game company, you ask us that's visual effects because yeah. we we see, this is how we see it in in, yeah. in the CG world. Sound is just an add-on, you yeah, know. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we make the game sound. Yeah, it's just yeah. something, but then to your guys, it's like sound. Also, it's yeah. it's a big thing. It's always the last. I was always the last person in the chain, so everybody Ex- needs to see. get done, and I'm, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever get passed on to me. Yeah, <laughs> like good sound actually makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, if so. if the thing is with video, mm-hmm. if if it's you, you might say it's okay yeah. when when it's bad, you can see, you can say that, yeah. right? But for sound, yeah. If it, if the sound is good, you don't re, you don't even think about it. Yeah. When the yeah. sound is bad, then yeah. you're like, oh shit, this yeah. this sound is terrible. Is wrong. That's yeah. the thing with sound. You yeah. Know? If the video is bad, you can say you can you can comment. Yeah. Or if it's very good, you can say, oh, this video is good. But sound, nobody does that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. It's, it's a whole mm. mind fuck. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Do you swear? Hmm? Do you swear? Try not to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what are some cool um, Cantonese words that you can throw around. There's no cool Cantonese words. Oh, is it? <laughs> no. Okay, but I heard that um, in Hong Kong, if somebody's if I compliment a girl, for example, that you're pretty, how do, how does she reply? In the Chinese culture. Would you even do that to someone? Like, would you even say that? Like. You probably say that to your girlfriend, I suppose. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't just do it. To, <laughs> you say it no, but you wouldn't say it to some random person on the street, and they would just think that you're why, freak. Why not? No, why not? <laughs> they would just think that you're happens freak. all the time. Still yeah. does it all the time. No, you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a freak of life. <laughs> or they would just think that you are like you are a freak. Like they oh, would just it? stay away from you. Okay. Like, if you say it to a stranger. Okay. okay. Like, no, but if I say it to a friend, if I say it to you, how how are you supposed to reply in your culture? Uh, well, you just say thank you, I suppose. Like, but very awkward. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, but it, no, it, it is kind of awkward to say <laughs> to your friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but think about it in uh, think about it in, yeah. in, in in the words you would use in yeah. Cantonese, and then you have to convert it. How do you say? It? Do you say yes, thank you, or you say no, I'm not? You would just say yes, thank you. <laughs> and you, you quietly walk away. Well, you know, my friend, <laughs> my friend from Hong Kong is yeah. like a, another car self mate. Yeah. She told me that she was she was kind of giving me a few lines of how I will re- reply yeah. to some of the of the words, and uh, the way it translates when somebody give you a compliment, if yeah. you translate it in, into English, mm-hmm. it's kind of saying no, thank, you, no, I'm not, thank you. It's like being humble. Yeah. If you know what I mean, it's right. like if you give a compliment, mm-hmm. you don't say yes or no, thank you. Oh, yeah. thank you. You say you kind of say no, you're not. Right. I don't know. If, is that true? That's interesting. Yeah, I suppose. Like if I think of it the other way, like if you compliment not, you know, on the appearance, mm-hmm. but you compliment on something else. Yeah. Like let's say for a skill. Yeah. And people would usually be humble and say. No, I'm not. <laughs> Do they say no, I'm not? Or they would. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, I'll say yeah. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> how that's how it translates, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. And in and in Hong Kong is it like a tradition you have to get a man from Hong Kong or you can you can get Well you can get into a relationship with anyone you want. It anyone depends on like. the family, I suppose, mm, yeah, like because yeah. everybody's everyone different, knows, right? Yeah. But you know, usually it's not that straight, I suppose. In the Chinese culture you just get married, whoever. Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Do you do the parents choose for you? No, not in, uh, it's not in Hong Kong. There's no arranged marriage. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Oh, do you wanna just clarify a little bit the difference between Hong Kong and China? Most some people yeah. don't know that. Well, I suppose Hong Kong is part of China, mm-hmm. but um, we have different passports. Okay. So. So you're a different country. Well, that's the awkward thing, isn't it? You you can say it's a different country because we have a different law system, but it's still within. I think some the some aspect is still under Chinese control. Let's say, for example, the main government mm. um, is still under China. But um, we also have a border. So once you cross the border, everything is so different. So the culture is very different. Mm. The law system is different. And um, that's about that, I think. Yeah, just much more westernized and much more international. So do you have a, a prime minister or a president in Hong Kong? Um, what what do, do they call, call that? Not too much into politics stuff, but um, nice. I don't even know what you call those people. Like we have, we have something yeah. in common then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then do you? I mean, just to to clarify on that, it's more like Cape Town becoming its own country. It's still in South Africa, but yeah. operating on its own yeah yeah rules and stuff. But right? imagine you have your own passport. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. say Cape Town. Oh, the Cape Town passport. Yeah. Okay, but for you can. If you coming from China, do you need a passport to to get into Hong Kong? Well, that's the thing, like, cause. Um, like I think a few years ago people from China like the mainland Chinese they want to be in Hong Kong because mm. of all the benefits and stuff so more people coming in so only these recent years the government says okay so mm. they put line you know restrictions on how many people can come through even for visit yeah. they need a visa like some sort of visa yeah. to come down but for us we have like this you know ID card and we can just go in and out for us oh. it's easy okay. yeah so how do you why is the why is the Chinese is it why is the rest of the Chinese so like the mainland China yeah. it's very restrictive and not very free you know in a way it's it's more like I know for a fact maybe that yeah. most people in China once they come out of it they travel a little bit they kind of feel like they they weren't living fully in a way yeah it's like the Chinese culture is very restrictive or is it the government yeah yes yeah. it's, it's the government isn't it like yeah you know goes back to this poli- um, political stuff. Yeah. Um, is it communist? That communist, yeah. yeah. So the um, the mainland Chinese government control a lot of different aspects, like including the news. That's one of the things that I noticed. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of accidents, they don't manage to get to be being broadcast to the world. Like they would change little details. Yeah. Just to kind of, you know, accommodate what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so is, isn't that going to be hard for you to go back to Hong Kong and live there again? Well, I think we'll see. Because I, I don't think I have any options yet. Because okay. if I want to be a freelancer, Hong Kong is the place to set up my own you know, private practice. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, unless I want to you know, work as a full-time, find a full-time job in, let's say, Australia, yeah. then I could do that. But um, yeah, I need a visa. Okay. Yeah. And if you had to choose to live anywhere, where would, would that be? Well, I think I might go back to New Zealand, actually. Yeah, okay. if I could choose. Not Cape Town, no. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, Esther, it was very nice meeting you. Oh, Steve, you have anything else? Uh, <coughs> this was a funny question I had from another podcast, actually. If you had to choose between being a Godzilla or being a billionaire, which one would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> a Godzilla. Which is a Godzilla? No, I won't, yeah. <laughs> Of course. Three comments, right? <laughs> One more question. I think that I just thought about. Uh, do you, did you any? Do you have any superheroes? Superheroes. Yeah. Did you had any? No, not really. No. Is it? No. That's not so Asian. What kind of superheroes can you think of? Like Superman, Spiderman, I don't know, whatever. Out? Like maybe could be anime. I'm sure you have a superhero, a famous superhero. In oh, Hong maybe Kong. if I could think of, you know, I mean, the cartoon. there's so many graphic artists. Yeah, there. you know the cartoon. I think it is a Japanese cartoon. That I think it's called um, Ding Dong. Ding Dong. Yeah, Ding I Dong. think that's if I remember it right. So it's someone who has a big pocket and you can just pull off stuff whenever you want. Oh. So ah. yeah, you can think of some items and you can just pull it out from your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ding. a that's a famous superhero. Yes. That would okay. be Ding my superhero, I suppose. <laughs> Did you have any super uh, superheroes or people that you look up to when you were younger? No. Or you still do at the moment? Not really. No. Mm-hmm. 
Nothing, no one I can think of in particular, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, and if you think of the word disruptive, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Disruptive? Mm. Mm. Volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it. That's the first thing that pops up in my mind. <laughs> and if you if you think of the word role model, who is the first person you think you think about? Oh, probably my dad. I would say. Uh-huh. Yeah. What do you tell tell a little bit about him? What did he do? Well, I suppose like he's a person who's very very generous, very open minded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just very caring, I suppose. Yeah, that's some of the few aspect that I can mm. look up. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, well, that's very nice. Yeah. Uh, but if you have to look at yourself, how do you, how do you see a, like, what's your vibe? How do you describe yourself in, in in a couple of words? Describe myself. Yeah. That's a tough question again. Yeah. What I'll say first thing, is adventurous. Mm-hmm. Adventurous. Okay. Yeah. Um. Very disciplined, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the two main things, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what do you, since you have traveled, um, what do you think of uh, women, the way women are treated in Africa, for example? Wow, what have I seen so far? Hmm. Well, I suppose it's. Yeah, I, I suppose I don't know. Mm, I haven't spent enough time with you know mm-hmm. the locals to really comment on that. But like from mm-hmm. what I've seen in Uganda, that's mm-hmm. that's pretty. It's very equal okay. in, Uganda, in Uganda, in Kampala, like at least you know people that I stay with, like the host or the stories that they told me, they could you know start up their own business and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's that part of Uganda that's that's quite nice. It's very similar to Hong Kong. So okay. no comment on that. But, um, Do you believe that there is a uh, an imbalance between men and women in the world generally in at the balance? moment right now? As in the population, so yeah. what you mean? No, I mean how they're treated? Yeah, how they're treated right now. Well, I don't really know enough to comment on that. I suppose. Right. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm just trying to get a a mindset like from different people from different places right. about this yeah yeah because me and my flatmate spend a lot of time talking about this issue oh okay or a couple of people that i've met I especially see. the scandinavians yeah <laughs> they have a whole different look about it so i'm just okay. curious yeah so yeah esther wong mm-hmm. it was nice meeting you Very nice we meeting can go you. have dinner yeah. and that's how it went with esther it was fun went out for dinner after that with uh, like with Sheila Garcia who was also on the podcast number six so you have to check that out as well it was awesome and Steve was there myself went for dinner and we it was first Thursdays in Cape Town which is the every first Thursday of the month there is a an open market at night where um, the, the restaurants and shops are still open until 11 at night and then you know you can just go have food art, art galleries are still open so we went to see a few of those and then we went for some asian food and we looked for some african food but we didn't find it but anyways remember to like and subscribe on itunes gray f podcast leave a comment and remember to listen to the previous episodes as well if you missed out otherwise thanks for listening and see you on the next one <laughs>